What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. As promised, we're doing double upload today. So I uploaded Captaincy earlier and now I'm doing a slightly new video, although it's very similar to one I did about a month or so ago. I'll put it up on screen now. Uh, it was 100 FPL managers that I went and asked. So I DM'd 100 separate FPL managers to ask for their top tips. For this one, I've done it a little bit differently. I wanted to get more members of the community involved. So I put out a Google form on Twitter and Instagram and asked anyone that saw it to basically give their opinion. So we're talking about engaged FPL managers. What are their opinions on some of the hot topics, the burning questions that you've got that you need to know the answer to to lock in your team selection, right? So I'm going to go through the basically the answers what people gave the percentages and stuff like that and then i'm going to talk through my opinion on these things as well whether i agree there's probably some that i disagree with as well i don't know if we're going to do this every single week if you enjoy it do give it a like if there's enough likes there's enough views and stuff then we might make this into a weekly series but i do already have some ideas for when i want to do this throughout the season right there's specific times of the season when i think this would be good so we've had over a thousand responses i put a thousand in the title because that sounds good we've actually had over a thousand responses and they're still coming in so let's get going there's about eight or nine questions to go through let's take a look at the answers so just a couple of things right this is only the kind of second time i've done a video like this especially to this kind of scale as well um so i could make it look a little bit better i know that we can have a nicer looking graph and nicer looking responses and stuff like that so yeah any graphic designers get in touch or marco if you're watching get in touch and let me know how you think we can present this a little bit better but obviously all the info is on screen right and this one's specifically about gundawan keep or sell i think it's worth noting that to get more of the community involved obviously i just put the tweet out to everyone instead of dming people so there is a wider range of responses but obviously i'm not too sure who's replied it could be just i don't want to say standard fpl managers but non-content creators content creators there's lots of variety in here but i do think the fact that they're following me on twitter probably means they're more engaged than the normal manager so the results are quite good right so this one was good to and keep or sell i specifically did not put this tweet out until after the Man City press conference. So in that, Pep said, Gundogan is fit. He uttered those words, right? So there was over a thousand responses. Only, it was quite close. I gotta be honest, because I put this out after the uh, after the press conference, I thought it'd be a little bit higher for keep. So 53.5% said keep, 46.5% said sell. In my opinion, the fact that Pep said he's fit, that kind of lands me more to thinking it's perfectly fine to keep him. What I will say is, I'm pretty sure he's going to drop in price tonight. I thought he was going to drop in price last night and he didn't. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't drop before the deadline. Even if he doesn't, very soon he's going to. Now, should that play into your thinking possibly depending on who you want to bring in so you need to have a think about your own team and then look ahead to kind of next week what transfers will you make how much money do you need like for example greenwood is a key player if people go from gundaman to greenwood which we'll talk about in a second um then if one drops and the other one goes up you're going to find it hard well it's impossible to bring them in in a straight swap you'd have to fund it elsewhere so do you have cash in the bank is that a move that you want to make these are all things that you're going to have to think about but when a manager says a player is fit and when he says that De Bruyne might not be, and they're playing Norwich at home, I, I've got a, I don't know, just a sneaking suspicion now that Gundogan's going to start. And I think this was the fixture he was brought in for. There's every chance that we should just be keeping him. So I'm a little bit surprised that keep wasn't a bit higher, but it still was the majority. So if you're undecided, there you go. 53% of people, 53.5, think you should be keeping. So there could only be one follow-up question. If... If you were selling Gundogan, who would you go for? And probably unsurprisingly, 54.6% of people said Greenwood, right? Which I'm not too surprised about. Did I expect it to be that high? Maybe not. But I knew that he would be the majority favourite. And I don't necessarily disagree. Because I think for the next two to three game weeks, his game time should be pretty good. The one thing that's good about doing this video after the press conference is, obviously I've heard from all the managers now, um, and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Basically, he said that Cavani, it was something along the lines as he hasn't been training too much and that he's not up to speed, but he's chomping at the bit and he keeps himself in good shape. I'd be surprised if Cavani doesn't make an appearance this weekend. It could be five minutes off the bench. It could be 10 minutes. But as soon as he's back and Sancho's playing, Greenwood's place in that team becomes a little bit... Um, 
I don't know. It becomes a little bit undecided about whether he's going to play every week because they could move Pogba to a more central position, play Sancho on the left, play Greenwood on the right, Cavani up front, but they could also keep Pogba on the left. And then suddenly Cavani, Sancho and Greenwood are all playing for two spots and you've got to throw Martial in the mix as well. So I don't think that Greenwood is a bad option. I think if I was selling him with nothing else to consider, it's probably who I would go for. But again, you've got to think about that money. Do you need the money for next week to do a different move? Think about Son, for example. If he's someone that you want to bring in, how are you going to get that money? If you're doing Gundogan to Greenwood, have you got another way? Are you going to go without Son? That's fine. I'm not saying you have to bring him in. But these are th this is what I'm trying to do on these videos, is try and get you to think about basically what you need to be thinking about when you manage your team. Um, elsewhere, Rafinha, 9.6%. I'm kind of happy that he was that high, because I think it's easy to forget a player when they blank in the first game week. But 9.6 is decent. Next up was Ben Rama, and then it was Saar. I think that's uh, to be expected. Barnes was quite low, and Harrison was really low. No, no, no one likes him at all. But yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with much that I see on that. I think most, I think most of those picks are fine. Greenwood probably is the number one if money's not an issue. After that, it's just, you know, how long-term do you need someone? Saar is more of a long-term pick, and Buimo and uh, maybe Benrahma are more short-term picks. So it all depends on what your strategy is. So for anyone that doesn't know, I put up a tweet before I put up one asking for the answers. I put one up asking for the questions. And quite a few said, it, uh, basically, should I be getting Calvert-Lewin in for one of my strikers? So the main ones were kind of Ings and Wilson, but I threw Bamford in there as well. So is it too early to move from Ings, Wilson, or Bamford? to Calvert-Lewin in game week two a lot of people thought that Calvert-Lewin looked good which he did he had a lot of shots the fixtures are good as well uh, and I like him I got no issues with bringing him in this week but as the community said over a thousand one hundred responses for this one 87.4 percent so quite conclusive there uh, in terms of the way the community is thinking saying it's too early and I agree and I know I'm like a broken record this week about saving a transfer but you've built this team for a reason Wilson and Ings they've got good fixtures going forward Bamford's just had a tough one now he's got two easier ones in Burnley and Everton I think I keep getting it wrong it's Everton then Burnley sure they've got Liverpool to come but then the run is really good he's on penalties for me there is I wouldn't say zero reason to move for Calvert-Lewin because, again, he looked good. The fixtures are good. Uh, and I guess compared to some players, he's quite low-owned in the community. At least the, you know, if I went on Twitter right now and asked content creators and people that are fully engaged in Twitter whether they own Calvert-Lewin, I would say it's quite low, right? So he is somewhat of a differential in that regard. But it's just too early to be making that move. Ings has got a great fixture. Wilson's fixtures are good. And like I said, Bamford's are too. So I agree. 87.4%. Uh, I would do it. 12% said they, they'd go for it. But remember, another caveat much easier to say it on a form than actually do it for your team so yeah i think 87.4 percent absolutely correct so i did my capsi video earlier if you watch that you already know my opinion but i thought i would get the community to settle the captaincy debate for game week two so uh we've had over 1200 responses to this particular question i just put salah and fernandez because they were the main two that people seem to be getting into a bit of a headache with and obviously i put the option to go for someone else i haven't quite worked out the math here but what it must be out of 95 percent ish just under for those two so about six or seven percent went for someone else right so this tells me again fully engaged twitter managers fpl managers in general and from instagram as well um are going for Salah. So no, no matter how much their discussion is, no matter how much someone puts up a tweet and says, I'm really not sure between Salah and Fernandez, there is a big majority going for Salah. So we know what's going to happen. In game week two, once the deadline's pass, we're going to see that he is probably the most captain player, which we is probably not news to us, right? We already knew that would happen. I do wonder if I'd put this out before last week whether Fernandez would have been a bit lower I still think 20% is fairly high uh, I guess look you can take this two ways some managers like to go a little bit different so they might look at this and think wow if everyone's going that much for Salah I'm going to try and get ahead with Bruno Fernandez right because if Bruno Fernandez outscores him again you get a little bit higher up the ranks some people will look at it and think Christ, if that many people are captain in Salah, I don't want to risk it. And if it's that close, sometimes maybe it is better to go for the better um, player. If you, and that's if you genuinely cannot decide. If you've got a gut instinct about which one's better, just go for them. But as you can see, there's only a few brave managers going for someone else. Salah is the overwhelming captain for this week. 
So I included this one because I have had a lot of questions about Lukaku, uh, Lukaku and I've kind of talked about how it's a bit of a panic. People are just worried about not having him and how are we going to bring in all these big hitters? And again, I've already given my opinion this week on it, but this just shows to you just how much the community, and obviously I use that in kind of the community because obviously it's just a thousand responses. I'm sure if I kept this post up for a bit longer, we'd have 2,000, 3,000 responses or whatever it might be. Um, but it's still a large chunk, right? Most of the community is not worried about Lukaku. From what Tuchel has said today, to me it sounds like he's probably going to start. Would I be surprised if he scores? No. But like I said earlier in the week, Fernandes and Salah are still great options. It's not like by not having Lukaku, your team is weakened. Should we be thinking about him? Yes. Should we be thinking about in the long, medium term, whatever it might be, how to bring him in yeah we absolutely should and if he scores a hat trick against arsenal maybe we should think about bringing him in a little bit quicker because his price will rise he will get transfers in but as you can see 98.5 percent are just waiting there is apparently 1.5 percent that are going to bring him in straight away so i do wish you luck but right now we shouldn't be we shouldn't be panicking too much it's nice to get on a big hitting differential early so if you genuinely think he's going to outscore Salah outscore Fernandez, and you've got the funds or the the you know you can do it quite easy especially if you can do it in one move then maybe go for it I'm not sitting here telling you that you can but if you're in any way worried that if he scores two goals or gets a hat trick that's going to suddenly dent your rank too much it's probably not so I put out a question about um, Jota as well. I know what one of the patrons for the Patreon Q&A that I did yesterday, like there's links to that and stuff in, in the description below, was asked about Jota and would I move him on? So I put, they've got Burnley, then Chelsea, and then Leeds in the next three games. Would you consider selling Diogo Jota in game week two? Quite, I mean, it was majority hold, 61.9%, but I would say for a question like this after just one week, 38.1% is quite high. Now, there is going to be some managers that just never fancied him from the start anyway, and so therefore, they're still of the opinion you shouldn't have probably bought him in the first place. But I think there are a lot of managers that maybe think, well, he got his goal against Norwich. We kind of knew he was going to start there. From here on out, it gets difficult. And I know we've got all this talk about, which you know I've talked about already this week, about the international break and whether like Salah or whoever it might be might miss out but we don't know that for sure yet so we can't say that Jota's minutes will be increased at any point my thinking is that they probably play Firmino against Chelsea right a little bit more control possibly and therefore to get him maybe up to speed for that they play him against Burnley I mean Jota could come off the bench of course but there's quite a few players especially like Greenwood around the same price for now um, and some cheaper players that are also doing well that just aren't as much of a minute risk i mean greenwood will be at some point I, I still stand by the fact that he will be a minute's rotation risk at some point not right now but soon enough uh, but there's cheaper players that may be going to do the business so again personally i think 38 percent is quite high for a sell i think i would keep and hope that he gets some time against bernie because you kind of knew what you were getting yourself into before you bought him but after after that chelsea and beyond i, I think there's better options personally they're just going to get better minutes so i thought these last couple of questions were really good because they were more strategy but rather than based on a particular player so i gave the scenario what's more valuable rolling a transfer in game week two so obviously so when you get to game week three you've got two free transfers or bringing in a player early that you're going to want in game week three anyway. So you've already earmarked in game week three, I'm going to sell this player for that player. And you know 100% you want to do it regardless. But you also know they're going to rise in price. It doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get priced out. But obviously you will lose a bit of value by going for them late. So I basically gave the two options. You roll the transfer still or you bring the player in early. Again, I'm not surprised that roll the transfer one out. Um, but I'm surprised it wasn't a bigger percentage. Because I think the way... The most FPL managers are. They're kind of, not, not most maybe, but on Twitter, I was expecting more of a, I don't know, like a risk adverse. Like, you know, rolling that transfer would be the most important thing. Maybe 75% to 80% uh, of responses to be that. But it wasn't the case. Like 33% said bring the player in early. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. But you have to be 100% locked. If it's a bit like, I might want that player, I'll see you next week, then I wouldn't make the move early, especially if you're not going to be priced out. Um, but I do think building value is not a bad strategy in FPL. And a few people are going to ask me about price rises again. How do you know? I use FPL statistics. And when a player gets to like 90% plus for going up in price, then there's a risk they're going to move up overnight. It doesn't always happen. It might be the next night, the night after. And when they're going down, once they get to like minus 80%, then I start worrying that they're going to drop in price. Again, it's not an exact science, but it can happen. So 
I kind of agree, I've said it all week, the role in the transfer is very important, but I also think team value can be important too. So I would definitely, if you're 100% locked into that transfer anyway, and the player you're getting rid of, you're not too sure about, you're not too worried about this week, I wouldn't be against making that transfer. So this kind of ties into the last question, right? So it's very similar. Is squad value more important this season than last season, right? Now, the problem with this question, which I've put out, so I've chosen this question, uh, and now I'm saying there's a problem with it is, it's easy to remember what happened last season that we had loads and loads of cheap players players like Rafinha that did really well towards the end of the season and obviously lots of the strikers that are doing or gonna hopefully do well this this season like Antonio uh, Wilson Bamford they were all much cheaper last year so right now it feels like there's just no cheap players and because of Salah and Fernandez and Lukaku and De Bruyne and Kane possibly moving to Man City and Son and Vardy etc it feels like there's a lot of premium players we're going to want to um, put into our team and it was actually someone called late riser uh, late riser 12 i think the the twitter handle is um who was talking about this morning saying that they think that um team value might be more important this year because of those big hitters i i'm kind of falling into the same i mean it's interesting that the the small majority or the or the smallest uh chunk of the the graph or the, or the pie chart is less important right i think that was that was probably kind of obvious that was going to be the case and the same is 66 percent. i kind of feel like that too because at the start of the season we always feel like we haven't got a mo enough money all the time and i get the argument that lukaku and kane and all those players i just listed uh, are possibly going to be big but i think these days fpl price players so well it's very difficult to get like three or four big hitters in our team anyway these days back in the day players prices didn't necessarily go up so much um and it was a bit easier to get like a team of like son and kane and you know fernandez and salah whoever it was in one team we just don't have that now i think we have to accept that we're going to have to make transfers for these premium players and i think it's probably as important as it ever is yes at some times of the season it can be really handy to have that extra money and i do think building team value at the start is something i tried to do last year can be helpful but there will always be those cheap players that come to the fore right that we that we get in and they work for our team they get a bunch of goals and assists way above their price and suddenly it feels like it's a bit easier to get them in but on the flip side i do kind of agree that i'm looking at my team right now thinking how the hell am i going to fit lukaku fernandez and salah in but ultimately for me captaincy is always going to be the number one so if i have to make a sacrifice like if i have to sell fernandez or i have to sell salah to get the number one captain who's also a good captain choice for the next couple of weeks or like maybe two out of four of the next game weeks then i'll make that move so I, i'm going to agree i think it is the same i think it was important last year and it's still important this year we just haven't um we just haven't necessarily found all the cheap players yet but they will emerge they always do I mean, think how many 4 million defenders have already started. So there we go. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. It would be good to know. So leave a comment what you thought about this kind of video, this concept. Is it good? Is it helpful? Obviously, for some of this stuff, I've already given my opinion this week. But it's good to then get a huge chunk of the, the community's thoughts as well. So over a 1,000 managers, I think, is a pretty decent sample size. Obviously, there is over 7 million FPL managers, so it's not perfect. But I think it gives a pretty good... Um, representation so do let me know what you think if you did enjoy it do give it a like uh, and maybe we can do a few more like i said there's specific times of the season i've got um, ideas for this but if we want to turn it into a weekly series if it works on a friday um, because the press conferences and stuff have finished then yeah perfect let me know i will be back tomorrow with a deadline stream i'm probably or i'm hoping to start if i'm up uh, at nine o'clock so two hours before the deadline starts we'll get through a bunch of questions otherwise that is it for me for game week two the deadline stream will be the last time you see me before game week two and then we'll be back of course uh, on sunday to start the game week three preparations thank you for watching everything this week give it a like hit that subscribe button and i'll see you again soon